Hello everyone. Uh, the next topic that we will take is post insertion problems in complete denture. Now, after uh, firstly, let us uh, clear with certain words which is uh, which was there previously, and now things have been changing. First, it was denture delivery. Then it came up to denture insertion. Then now presently we are using the term denture placement. So, so post placement problems in complete denture, how it will be. So we all know that after the denture is placed, now we need to ask and recall the patients for further assessment of the dentures. So what are the things that are been supposed to note when the patient comes as a recall appointment for his or her own denture assessments? So the first thing that we are supposed to see is a general assessment of the patient like asking the history, how was the experience of the patient, the present problem if any, the social factors, the examination by the doctor and the decision that we are supposed to take regarding what is to be changed, what is not to be changed. The denture based examinations, for example, the support is present, the retention, coming up to the stability of the denture, the translation, the color of the denture, the aesthetic appearance of the denture. Coming to the tooth examination, there is extensions of the denture, the contour, the kinetics of the denture teeth that we have given. Initially presenting problem, the patient can have some anatomic problems like it can be revealed with the help of clinical examination by also asking the patient at times functional problem due to inability of some bad denture base, it can have some tissues so that can give any problems in the function. Physiological and psychological which is the most dangerous situation for a dentist to uh, reciprocate into a denture and to find out from the patient's mouth because the patient will say there's a vague pain so it is very difficult for a dentist per se to find out where exactly the pain is originating from so it's more the psychological issue which is very challenging for a dentist history of the denture wearing is very important how did the patient feel what were the problems that the patient enc encountered during all this period when the patient was using the denture as the age increases, we all know that the functional and psychological activities will also decrease. The more you have to be giving uh, time, concern and care to the patients in, who are elderly aged. So that will also affect somewhere. The speech of the patients, how is good is the speech? Is there any problem with speaking ability and psychological responses by those particular denture which is there? Any problem by speaking any specific word? Is there any clearance or debilitating, debilitating of any words like for example S? Is there any problem with speaking of S? Some general facial morphology like for example if the wrinkle still there that means the vertical dimension that we have recorded is wrong somewhere. The local tissues which are present are they abused by any chance by our denture? So that means the intaglio surface of our denture has got some deficiencies examination of the denture basis that is the support is there present how do we get the support is present or not so we will find out in both the maxillary and mandibular denture bases if the support the integral surface is all fine is there any albicans candida albicans organizations in the denture that means the poor oral hygiene comes into picture retention and support of course we told how to evaluate that is with the two help of two fingers you're supposed to put it on one side and see if there is any lifting of the denture which we have inserted in the patient. If there is any loss of retention, we should be going ahead with relining and rebasing. So how you do the denture, the first method is see, uh, step method one will be, the first method one will be, seat the denture, apply the firm pressure in the posterior occlusal part. If it comes out and not moving, that means it has had good support. If it is moving out, it will have a bad support, so you need to rectify it. Second is you can do the same procedure with the help of any the closing paste that is this closing paste can be applied or the white paste or zinc oxide eugenol paste. The zinc oxide eugenol has two things reactor and activator so with the help of the reactor base plate you can also paste you also you can find out if there is any point which is giving any problem to the patient and abusing the tissue. So if there is uniform distribution it is good. If it has an uneven distribution, so where it has an uneven distribution, there it is hurting the patient. Periphery, we need to check if the buccal extensions, the lingual extension, the posterior extensions are all fine. If the width of the denture which we have 
placed in the patient's mouth is all fine if it is not hampering with the facial fullness and the labial fullness of the patient. We need to also find out if there is any problem in the mandible that is incorrect lingual extensions or in maxilla incorrect posterior palatal seal extensions which is to be very nicely examined for the under damming, over damming or over extensions. Coming to intraoral examinations, the labial and the buccal extension as we said it should be correctly there, it should not be overextended, neither it should be underextended because if it is overextended it will give bad labial fullness, if it is underextended it will give a depression in this, so it will give more age defect to the patient. Posterior palatal extension we need to mark the anterior vibrating line and the posterior vibrating line and transfer it into the denture and then see if there is any under extension or over extension with the help of mouth mirror also you can place the mouth mirror on the end part of the posterior palatal seal and ask the patient to speak out if there is any water coming out or any percolation of any saliva liquid or from that particular region that means there is some gap so there is under damming in those places that we need to suppose to fix it up the lingual extension ideally it should be when the tongue we are moving the tongue the lingual extension that denture should not be lifted out from its position if it is lifting out that means it is poorly supported so retract the labial buccal mucosa breaks the seal and patient is asked to elevate the tongue so by that also you will find out if there is any problem if there is no movement there is no over extension if there is movement you need to correct it the retention and periphery now once you move the denture forward that means you are checking for the posterior palatal seal. Once you are moving the denture backward, that means you are checking for the anterior seal if it is present. Both the seals should be present. Buccal shelf area again, you need to check for the buccal shelf area by asking the patient to move the mandible right and left and so you will find out. Posterior extension of the dentures, you need to see if the posterior extension is not over the retromolar area because it is in the inclined plate. And secondly, the constant pull of the muscle will dislodge the denture from that particular area. The anterior extension like superiorly directed forces are to be given and seen if the, for, uh, the seal is breaking. So if the seal is breaking that means we have got good retention and if there is no seal it is just coming out that means you need to work on that. Coming to most important part the occlusion. Again how to check for the occlusion with your two fingers. You will put in the buccal shelf area and then you will ask the patient to close the mouth. Once you are supposed to ask the patient to close the mouth slightly when there is a first feather like contact touch you are supposed to stop. Now that first feather like contact touch should be evenly distributed in all the teeth and not specific to one teeth. So if that is present in one teeth you have to go for the selective grinding of that particular teeth. You are not supposed to grind the functional cusp you will only grind the non-functional cusps. That is the buccal in the maxillary and lower lingual in the, the lingual in the lower cusps. Occlusal disharmony, if any present, we'll ask the patient's response first if the mastication was a problem after placement of the denture. So that needs some uh, good uh, modifications in the denture. If tissue responses has inflammation, so if there is an abuse to the tissue response, that means it has got any localized ridge crest region if there is a response that means that particular has some overextension some acrylic lying down in the intaglio surfaces if there is generalized inflammation that means you need to immediately remove the denture keep the patient to rest give vitamin supplements give some anti analgesic antiseptic gels and then go ahead finding out what was the problem with your denture soft tissue distor distortions that is inceptive occlusal contact if present then force will be too much in a localized area. If now there is a force so much in the localized area, there will be temporary or permanent deformation of the soft tissue. Once there is a soft tissue deformation starting off, that means your retention is into stake. Similarly, the same will be transmitted to the bone. So the bone will start resorbing more. So this is like uh, uh, accelerating the activity of bone resorption if your denture is putting an uneven force down. Coming to diagnosis part, that is intraoral observation that you need to find out if what exactly are the problems. You need to locate the problems first before going off to direct correction. First locate out the problems, search for the problem which is more concerned with anatomic factors like if there is tissue abuse, if there is an irritation. All those factors should be considered initially. If the denture itself is not maintained hygienically by the patient, that is one more important thing to be concerned about. 
So you ask the patient to close for the occlusion and you find out the feather touch uh, thing for the initial contact and also then ask the patient to close completely to so see the maximal intercuspation position. The vertical dimension should not change in this particular position. How are we supposed to find out where there is a discrepancy in occlusion? You can use articulating paper that is 8 microns uh, articulating paper you get. So you are supposed to put it on the both the sides and then ask the patient to bite. So the feather touch contact, the first initial contact which will come out. So that contact will be grinded off. So we will have the first use two kind of papers are available. One is blue paper, one is red paper. So first initially use a blue paper to get a maximal intercuspation. Then you ask the patient to do a feather like touch with a red paper because that is lighter in the uh, size. So that will have only one point, all blue and one points of red. So that is called the bullseye appearance. So now you have to just trim off the red part of the articulating paper on the artificial teeth. Now coming to center bearing devices can also be again used to find out where exactly are we lagging with the occlusion discrepancy. Mounting the dentures on the articulator. So once you are doing the center bearing plate and center bearing points. So now again you have the face bow which is recorded. Now you will again mount it in the articulator. And in the articulator you will do all the movements possible to find out where exactly there is an occlusion discrepancy. And you will correct in the articulator. After correction in the articulator then you will replace it in the patient's mouth and then finally see in the patient's mouth. If your records of the centriculation and protrusive records are fine and programming of the articulator is perfect, then we can do all the selective grindings in the articulator in the lab and not in the patient's mouth, which makes it more cumbersome and time taking of course chair side. Denture in use for more than one year, what happens is there is a term which is there in GPT-5, which was eliminated after that, settling of denture. What exactly does that mean? Settling of denture means that after repeated use of denture, the denture gets started getting adapted to the bone which is present. Even if the bone is resolving, the denture starts adapting to it. So setting of the denture with that of the bone present. So what happens, those patients who are old wearers, what happens, resorption of the bone takes place, but the denture also settles with the help of the characteristic of the acrylic. So the patient has no complaint regarding the older denture which has been used for past 15-20 years, a long period of time. So what happens? The reason for that is, now the acrylic leaches out and it is taking off the shape of the resorption bone. Now when you, once you ask the patient to take a new denture, it might be recorded in that position or it might not be. So if the recording of that new denture which is not in the position of the resorbed ridge, proper then the patient will feel the older denture is better and the reason remains settling of the older denture after usage of so many years. Then, then the new denture will not have loss, it will not have any retention, it will not have any stability. Now translation that is the biggest another question mark or uh, thing to be concerned worried about that is, is the both the side getting occlusion together? Is the bilateral balanced occlusion still there in the patient? And do a complete denture patient needs a biological occlusion? A, a, bi a balanced occlusion is required to every patient, right? But our mouth has a characteristic where every denture you put inside gets occluded. So that uh, how it, when it comes up to the fact that uh, the dentures which is there older, if it is not even balanced denture, then how are we supposed to go ahead that saying that it's, uh, the complete denture that is seating in the patient is going to get adapted. So now gave an effect called real F effect that is resiliency and like effect. What does that mean is in every tissue has got its resiliency to adapt to itself and the denture which is placed on that will also get adapted. So not required that you have to give a balanced occlusion to all the patients, a balanced denture to all the patient. Every denture gets adapted because of the real life effect. So the height of the denture gets decreased and the vertical dimension also decreases in those patients. Coming to extensions, so we are supposed to find out whether the labial extensions, the lingual extensions are fine because labial extension will more lead to un, unwillingful mouth and unlikely appearance of this labial frena. 
contour of the patient that the denture aesthetics if it is neglected it looks very bad because it will give a flat labial support and the lip support which will be because of those flat will be depressed so the lip support will be poorly supported so again that will be a problem kinetics active to display when the patient is speaking if we have not considered the 1 to 2 mm of teeth display during the trying stage of the patient the denture insertion time we will find out that the teeth display in the activity when function in function when the teeth display is shown will be very poor and it can be more it can be less if it is very much more then you will also find the patient giving a gummy smile which looks very anesthetic in certain kind of patients mostly a male patient so problems with newly placed dentures can be regarding aesthetics can be regarding phonetics can be regarding tissue irritation function and of course some uncommon problems which can be encountered by the patient the psychological problems which is very difficult for a dentist to handle coming to aesthetics aesthetic as more as science is concerned more as the person individuality is concerned science we can develop aesthetics according to the science but it depends from the patient to patient also how the patient want him or his herself to look like so aesthetic is more like a 50 50 of science as well as the patient's appeal coming to phonetics yes we are supposed to say the patient to wait for some days because phonetics is not going to get as proper as it was in natural dentition very soon because in natural dentition we have rugae where the tongue is going and supporting in dentures we do not have a rugae until we reproduce it in the denture itself so again the production of the sound which is pronounced by the patient is going to be different is going to be difficult for some days so we are supposed to ask the patient to read certain things loudly so that he or she gets used to the denture and the words like as ch j m especially comes out very clearly with the patient so those are all temporary problems but if it lasts for longer time you need to give a check to the denture tissue irritation like for example gagging what happens is if your posterior parietal seal extension is more beyond the posterior vibrating line and it is encroaching into the soft palate or uvula the more chances of gagging increases in those cases we are supposed to mark the anterior vibrating posterior line as told you how and then go forward with the correction of the denture and that will also create an occlusion and unstable occlusion in the patient so trimming of the overextended borders how you are going to manage it and rearrangement of the teeth contact if required do a rebasing entirely and then give away the new denture interferences that will cause difficulty in swallowing so the reasons may be overextended peripheral borders if the vertical dimension that is recorded is not proper or there is a decreased salivary flow in the patient we have discussed earlier as well the type of saliva which is favorable for the patient is zero mucus kind of saliva so if the patient is having two mucus saliva so that means the the quality of the saliva is very thick so it will dislodge the denture again if it is too thin then the interfacial surface tension is going to get compromised so we need to have a zero mucus kind of saliva in a patient to get the best quality of denture retention is concerned about so these are all the supportive things that you are supposed to check when in the recall appointment of the patient you need to ask the patient about his or her well being usefulness of the denture and regarding mastication regarding the aesthetics and if any change is required as a science point of view where we saw all the things that you are supposed to check then the change is mandatory and must without delaying because that may cause detrimental effect on the resorption of the ridge and the resorption rate will be further faster so you need to keep take care so you need to take care regarding all the aspects before finally sending off in the recall appointment of the patient thank you